this series of talks uh, basically comes under the subject statistics but as you have already seen that here we are putting too much emphasis on probability theory or mainly measure theoretic probability theory the question is why so there must be some relationship or some correspondence between these two topics one is probability theory and other is statistics and you should remember that in statistics we have to deal with data real life data so here in statistics if we say that x1 x2 xn are a set of observations then how we can relate this with the very mathematical and abstract uh, and, and very mathematical notion of probability may be defined on a some kind of abstract say, space. Although, although it is not really very, very abstract, uh, but it, at least it looks like that. So the question is how to, explore, how to explain that there is a very, very important relation between these two rather important correspondence between these two probability and the data oriented statistics. But we have to ensure that this relationship should be, uh, should be sound enough at least in terms of mathematics or rather in terms of the probability theory or rather in terms of the space in which we are working. As, as an example, we can think of the distribution function of a random variable. One can also think of that the realizations of a random variable which we can observe uh, in, in real life data or which we can say that the, these are the observations of the, of that constitute the data and we can do a lot of statistical stuff with this data. So the question is, is there anything that is analogous to the distribution function in probability theory, anything analogous in statistics whether it exists or not? The answer is obviously yes, but to explore all these things, this is a very intricate thing, a very, very nice thing uh, to, to uh, explore the bridge between these two. We have one important theorem which is known as glivenko cantelli theorem or glivenko cantelli lemma. So today we will concentrate only on discussing this very, very important theorem and very famous theorem are due to Glivenko and Cantelli. Frequently uh, we make a statement in statistics especially, we make a statement like a random sample describes a population. That means a random sample uh, can be treated as a very good representative uh, of the population or rather it contains many features or almost all the features of the population that obviously contained in the sample or many in, or lots of information about the population or the population parameters. Now this description uh, is very nice, uh, but can we explain it in terms of measure theory or probability theory? Because if we can explain this concept or this sample and the population and what is the meaning of describing a population through a sample in terms of probability or measure theory, then we can use lots of tools and techniques that has already been developed in probability theory into the statistics uh, to, to decipher many patterns, many information from the data. So the basic question is can we explain this thing that how to describe or, or we can describe or the claim that we can that a random sample describes the population. Uh, we, the answer is yes, we can explain it in terms of measure theory. But we have to establish that how we can say that yes, this is possible. The answer, the, this is due to the famous livenko cantelli theorem and naturally not without reason, it is sometimes called the fundamental theorem of statistics. So now we are going to state and prove and discuss the implications of glivenko cantelli theorem and you will see that uh, we will use many techniques from measure theory, probability, statistics, uh, analysis uh, to, to prove this theorem. First we define one important concept uh, which through which we can immediately see that there, there might exist a connection or a connection between probability and statistics or the data oriented statistics of the data x1, x2, xn will emerge immediately. So let x1, x2, xn be a sequence of iid random variables with distribution function capital Fx defined on R in the real line. Then we define the empirical 
distribution function which is denoted by fnx as fnx equals to 1 by n summation i equals to 1 to n indicator of x xi less than equals to x that means if xi for a particular i if the random variable the realization of the random variable is less than equals to x we call it 1 otherwise 0. So, this indicates that it is just a ratio of two quantities the numerator is the number of x1 x2 xn that are less than equals to x divided by n n is naturally the total number of such variables and in statistics we can say that this is nothing but the sample size. So, here we define an empirical distribution function and which has a clear indication uh, analog version of the distribution function defined in the probability theory. So, this empirical distribution function f n x should be the pivotal in glivenko cantilever lemma and it has the major role to play in this theorem. Note one important thing that by strong law of large numbers we can say that f n x goes to f x almost surely for any fixed x belonging to R. Since modulus of indicator of x i less than equals to x less than equals to 1 and naturally if we consider expectation of this variable expectation of indicator of mod x i less than equals to x less than infinity. So, that means expectation is finite. So, we can immediately say that for a given x belongs to R or the real line f n x can be treated as a reasonable estimate of f x. So, for any given x we can have one reasonable estimate of f x which is nothing but the empirical distribution function at that point x. But can we can we extend this thing little more in the sense that can we say that f n x is a reasonable estimate of f x when both these functions are viewed as functions of x. Again this answer is given by the same glivenko cantilever theorem. So, you see glivenko cantilever theorem has an immense implication uh, in, in, in this probability theory and statistics. So, what is the statement of glivenko cantilever theorem? As n goes to infinity probability modulus of f n x minus f x supremum of that difference supremum over x when x lies between minus infinity to infinity that is in the entire real line this supremum of the difference of this empirical distribution function and the distribution function goes to 0 probability of this incident this event equals to 1. That means, there is a very close connection between these two and it, it shows that f n x and f x they are very very close they can be made very very arbitrarily close uh, with probability 1. Now, in order to prove this uh, lemma uh, prove this theorem uh, let us first consider one sm small lemma uh, which states that for every real x f n x goes to f x almost surely and f n x minus goes to f of x minus almost surely as n goes to infinity. Now, note one important property of distribution function that we know that distribution function is right continuous it is not necessarily left continuous. So, to, to deal with those points at which it is only right continuous we are, we are defining we are checking whether f n x minus goes to f x minus almost surely. Uh, the proof is extremely simple because if we note that f of x minus is nothing but probability capital X less than x and capital F x equals to probability x less than equals to small x. We define f n x minus as 1 by n just a sample analog 1 by n summation k equals to 1 to n indicator of mod indicator of x k capital X k less than x and f n x we have already defined as 1 by n summation k equals to 1 to n indicator of x k capital X k less than equals to x. That means, given the distribution function at a particular point we can define the empirical distribution function and we 
consider the distribution function at a particular point where the distribution function may not be left continuous or rather we are considering the x minus point on the left side uh, and we define in the, uh, we define empirical distribution function or rather we define a function capital Fn x minus uh, exactly in similarly. Then if we define yk as indicator of xk less than equals to x, it is clear that yk are independently and identically distributed random variables with expectation of yk equals to expectation of i of xk less than equals to x which is equals to capital Fx. Then since they are independent, we can immediately see that yk is nothing but a binomial distribution with parameter 1 and p where p equals to nothing but capital of f of x. So by Kolmogorov's strong law of large numbers, the lemma is proved. Now we will prove the original glibenko cantilly theorem. First note that we are dealing with a quantity which is supremum of fnx minus fx modulus of that. Let us call this quantity as dn. Then for each x, fnx equals to fnx comma omega as a function of omega. So it is clear that as a function of omega, fnx omega is a random variable. Now right continuity of supremum indicates that the above is unchanged if we, re if we restrict ourselves or if we restrict the values of x uh, to be rationals. Now rational numbers are countable. So that immediately indicates that dn is measurable. So first what we are trying to show here that whether dn is measurable or not and this is immediately clear from the fact that fnx is a random variable as a function of omega and if we take x as rationals are countable, then naturally dn is measurable. Moreover, uh, dn is always bounded by 2. That means dn, take, dn is bounded and hence we can always say that dn is a bounded measurable function and so dn is a random variable. So since uh, dn actually involves uh, modulus and this difference of two distribution functions and supremum, so it is really a good to see whether dn is can be treated as a random variable or not and in fact uh, our argument ensures that dn is a random variable. Now let us consider r to be a positive integer which is greater than or equals to 2 and for k equals to 1, 2 up to r minus 1 let us define some partition points like xrk which is minimum of x such that fx greater than equals to k by r. That means this xrk is nothing but k by rth population quantile because this is defined in terms of capital fx which is the distribution function or the population distribution function of the random variable x. So xrk denotes the k by rth population quantile. In fact by the property of distribution function we can immediately have capital F of x minus less than k by r less than equals to fx. Then uh, we can consider like uh, minus infinity which is equals to x r 0 less than x r 1 less than x r 2 less than so on up to less than x r comma r which is equals to infinity. That means we are considering some kind of partition of the real line. And now we will consider only those intervals, intervals are semi closed that is left side is closed and right side is open that means xrk to xrk plus 1, xrk plus 1 is not included in this interval which are non-empty. So we will now consider only those intervals which are non-empty. Consider any x belongs to one such interval, let us say left side closed xrk to xrk plus 1 and the right side open that is a semi closed interval. Then we have fnx minus fx by the properties of distribution functions and naturally from the from some properties that we can observe for empirical distribution function we can immediately write fnx less minus fx less than equals to fnxrk plus 1 minus 
minus of f of x r k. Now we just add and subtract one quantity which is equals to the second quantity that is f of x r k minus. Let us call it 1. It is clear from 1 that f n x minus f x is bounded above by a quantity which can be written as the sum of two quantities. The first quantity being f n x r k plus 1 minus minus f of x r k plus 1 minus and the second term is f of x r k plus 1 minus minus of f of x r k. Now, let us look at these terms, some of these terms individually. So, f of x r k plus 1 minus minus f of x r k is less than equals to k plus 1 by r minus k by r which is nothing but 1 by r. Again we know that f of x r 1 minus is less than equals to 1 by r and f of x r comma r is greater than equals to 1 minus 1 by r. So, 1 implies that the second term is less than equals to 1 by r. So, that means f n x minus f x less than equals to f n of x r k plus 1 minus minus f x r k plus 1 minus plus 1 by r. Now, this is for almost all omega and 1 less than equals to k less than equals to r minus 1 because we have chosen this partition for a particular k and k uh, lies between 1 and r minus 1 inclusive both inclusive. So, let us call this condition. So, we have an upper bound of the difference of f n x minus f x that is the empirical distribution function and the population distribution function which is given by 2. Naturally, when we find one upper bound natural question is natural question will come whether we can find a lower bound to the same expression. So, let us try. Let us see, uh, uh, see note one thing that f n x minus f x again can be written as or, or is shown to be greater than or equals to f n x r k minus f n x r k plus 1 minus. And again using the same technique that is adding one term and subtracting the same term in the right side that is the term is nothing but f of x r k. We can write the right hand side as the sum of two individual terms. First term is f n x r k minus f x r k and just like the same argument using the same argument uh, as above uh, we can write the last term to be other than the minus sign the last term is less than equals to 1 by r. So, in effect f n x minus f x is greater than equals to f n x r k minus f of x r k minus 1 by r again for almost all the omega and this is true for k lies between 1 and r minus 1. Let us call this as 3. So, this entire thing is nothing but little bit of manipulation using a particular term or using the distribution function at a particular point looking the behavior of the distribution function at that point and the point which is immediately left to that point and little bit of manipulation will give us two important things. One is the upper bound to f n x minus f x the central term in our study and another is the lower bound to the same quantity. So, that means we can immediately say that f n x minus x is both bounded below and bounded above by two different quantities. Now, let us recall the lemma that we have just discussed which states that for each x there is a set a x with probability of a x equals to 0 such that limit f n x omega equals to f x as n goes to infinity and limit f n x minus comma omega equals to f of x minus as n goes to infinity except possibly on the set a x with probability a x equals to 0. That means, whenever this does not happen it may not happen on a particular set that may be a very small set or maybe a set 
but that set has probability 0. So, actually it has no effect on the actual study or the actual theorem or the results that we are going to show. So, similar arguments will also hold for x less than x 1 uh, x r 1 and x greater than equals to x r comma r minus 1. Uh, these arguments are exactly in the same line uh, uh, how we, we show that uh, conditions 2 and 3. Hence, from 2 and 3 for almost all real x, 0 less than equals to modulus of f n x minus f x because this is modulus so it is must be it must be greater than equals to 0 and this is again less than equals to maximum over k lies between 1 to r and j lies between 1 to r maximum of two quantities. The quantities are modulus of f n x r comma k minus f of x r comma k modulus of this quantity and the other quantity is modulus of f n x r comma j minus minus f of x r comma j minus modulus of that plus 1 by r. Now, if we recall the previous discussion, uh, these terms are nothing but the terms that are already we have seen these terms in equation 2 and 3. Let us call the right hand side as d r n omega because this happens for a particular omega. Then we denote d n the way we define d n as a supremum of uh, f n x minus f x as d n omega at, a, at omega which is equals to supremum over x modulus of f n x minus f x then it is clear that d n omega is less than equals to d r n omega plus 1 by r. That means that the expression or the bound that we get of f n x minus f x modulus of that this is bounded by bounded below by 0 and bounded above by d r n omega. So, just by taking supremum uh, over bo on both sides we have d n omega less than equals to this quantity. Now, if omega lies outside the, the union A of all countably many uh, sets say A x r k and B x r k by lemma uh, limit d r n w d r n omega equals to 0 as n goes to infinity for omega belongs to A and probability of A equals to 0. That means, we can think of many many sets given by the suffix x r and k they must be countably many and if omega lies outside these regions and union of all such sets such that probability of A equals to 0 then it is clear that d r n omega equals to 0 as n goes to infinity whenever omega belongs to A. This implies that lim sup of n goes to infinity of d n less than equals to 1 by r almost surely. Now, this quantity is less than equals to 1 by r almost surely. Now, what is r? r is actually arbitrary. We have chosen r arbitrary but countable. So, since r is arbitrary and countable, we just take the limit on both sides and the left side is independent of r right now. So, taking limit as r goes to infinity, the theorem is completely proved. That means, lim sup of d n actually equals to 0 almost surely. So, the Grivenko cantilly lemma is proved using properties of distribution functions whether it is right continuous or maybe right continuous but not left continuous and some results from analysis like countability and taking some limits uh, we can we can we have proved this Glivenko cantilly theorem completely. Detailed proof of Glivenko cantilly theorem actually provides us many things. In one one major thing is that it basically states that the uh, distribution function or some kind of closeness of the uh, distribution function and the empirical distribution function in terms of probability obviously. So, which relates probability theory and statistics, but if we look into the detailed proof of this theorem, it is immediately clear that 
we have actually used many many important concepts many many important results and theorems in order to prove this Glevenko Cantilly theorem the major uh, such things or results are strong law of large numbers we have used the concept of distribution function from the pure probabilistic viewpoint or based on a random variable on the other hand we have also defined an empirical distribution function which we can define based on the data or, or functions of x x1 x2 xn these are the random variables of so the sequence of random variables whose realizations we can call data so for each such realization we can define this empirical distribution function so here comes the uh, statistics part uh, and that is going to be coupled with the probability part which is the distribution function we have also seen that uh, we have also used the uh, different conditions of the uh, different characteristics of the distribution functions namely a uh, right continuity uh, namely non decreasing part and all these things moreover uh, if we look at this thing very very carefully we have also used some very basic concepts that comes from the real analysis as for example we have used that the uh, countable numbers or countable sequence of numbers and we have taken uh, we have considered the behavior of such sequences as n goes to infinity or the number of observations goes to infinity so and the different types of convergence we have used we have used the supremum over a, over a series of numbers or n greater than equals to 1 so with all these things putting into the into one pot we have proved and we have explored uh, this relationship that is given by glevenko cantilly theorem so in that sense uh, it is actually a very important not only a very important theorem but it also gives us uh, the idea of uh, moving around several several things or how many things from real analysis probability measure theory statistics are, can be integrated under into one theorem so that is the beauty of glevenko cantilly theorem